Your word says when the enemy comes like a flood, he is already coming, Lord. There is already, Lord God, a tsunami, Lord God, Lord God, of wickedness, it's just coming. But you said when the enemy comes like a flood, you lift up a standard. I thank you, Lord God, for the standard of deliverance. Lord God, to rescue people, first of all, your, your people, Lord God, standard of deliverance, Lord God. When people see this wickedness, Lord God, being uh, wickedness growing even more wicked, and maybe even your people will wake up, Father God, and Lord God will run, Lord God, to get deliverance, to get cleaned up. For Jesus Christ is coming for a bride with a blemish, spot and wrinkle. Bless your word, Lord, your truth tonight. It is your truth which sets us free in Jesus' name. Amen? Well, I want to, you know, just uh, today touch on, uh, you know, it, there's so much of it in our society. I want to touch on the freedom, you know, breaking the chains of addiction. Amen? There is so much addiction, you know, just, you know, just uh, in our uh, society, you know, and uh, interesting things that, you know, poor countries, you know, you will not have, you know, this type of addictions as we have it in, the, in, in societies of the West, you know. Well-to-do society, Judeo-Christian kind of origin, you know, you know, because of the abundance of bread, Bible says the so, the sin, you know, just which was in Sodom and Gomorrah was, you know, just growing more and more and more because of the abundance of bread. Because of the abundance of bread, you know, just in this nation we can afford to smoke cigarettes. You won't hear, see it in in America, in, in in Africa, because they don't have money. You will see, you know, just cocaine. You will see alcohol, you know. You will see, you know, other things, you know, just of addiction of all kinds. And, you know, and just looking closer, it is in the societies which have really are well to do. A boundless of bread, you know, breeds so much sin. Even instead of thankfulness, more godliness, so much sin. I was discussing with somebody this week. You know, when I go to the nations, I see, you know, sometimes miracles, I don't see it here. And I was shocked when I came back and I prayed for people with the same problem and then see it happening. I said, God, what is it? Finally, this is what I got from the Holy Spirit. They have nothing over there. That's why Jesus is everything. We have everything. That's why he's not everything. We take him for granted. And addictions is one of those things, you know. We take it, you know, just for granted the Lord. We just indulge in everything from gambling to, to whatever you call it. You cannot get addicted, you know, to some, you know, you can get depressed, but, you know, not maybe addicted, you know, in some countries because just simply they're so poor, they just cannot afford. So, praise the Lord, maybe give you some... Um, this is just a huge topic, so no way I can touch, you know, just it. This is from a, I call it school, you know, just of deliverance 301. <laughs> not even 101, not 201. It just further than that, they asked me when I was going to Poland to preach, you know, just on the freedom, you just from, you know, just from addictions, you know. And I, as I said, you know, through all the years, we delivered people, Jesus did, you know, from all kinds of addiction, from alcohol, cocaine, you know, just porno, you know, just uh, pharmaceutical drugs, you know, just, you know, just gambling, you know, just uh, sugar addictions, you know, just uh, <laughs> addiction to games, you know. I had this guy, you know, he, you know, a computer addict, you know, and he was playing all those games, like a Warcraft, you know, and those really bad games, you know. So I made him write me, to write me on a piece of paper all those games. You, you wouldn't believe how long the list was. And then I said, well, brother, you know, he was in his 20s, yeah? I said, well, renounce those things. So he was saying, well, Jesus, I renounce this game, this game. Then he came to the last game, and then a voice came out of his mouth, was crying, and what we are going to do now? We, 
<laughs> Who was talking? <laughs> the devils were unhappy, you know, just heartbroken because he renounced every, you know, just, <laughs> every, you know, just uh, all the addictions. Praise the Lord. I, I had people try to help, you know, just uh, crack cocaine addicts, you know, just living with me. They robbed me, you know, just. <laughs> I remember one guy, you know, just gave me his money. He said, well, Joseph, hold this money because I know I'm going to spend it on cocaine. I said, okay, I'll hold the money for you, you know. I'm on the second floor in my office, you know, so then somebody's climbing outside on the balcony. And the guy showing up at the door of the balcony with a serious face. Give me my money. I said, no problem, here is your money. What are you going to fight with a guy who is already stoned and he just wants more? <laughs> so, praise the Lord. Not mentioning, you know, just, uh, you know, um, myself who was addicted to all kinds of, you know, just things. That's what we're going to be talking about, it, you know, so because we want to help people. Amen? You know, this is a deliverance ministry, those who come here regularly, you know. You know, you, you meet people here and there, so you, you need some, you know, God's perspective, you know, on addiction and, you know, how to deliver them. Amen? You need to know the truth yourself, and maybe some sitting here or watching us need deliverance, you know, just from addiction. Praise the Lord. So that's what it is, freedom from addiction. Praise the Lord. So maybe we'll just give a definition of this addiction, you know, <clears throat> um, it means to apply oneself habitually to devote time and attention by customary or constant practice. Sometimes could be in a good sense. Because do you know that there's a word addicted in the Bible? There's only one word. There's no addiction, no, you know, any other, but it's a word called, you know, just um, addicted, and it's, so this is in a positive sense, so I can tell you that, that I am addicted. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanas, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Well, I am addicted to deliverance ministry. <laughs> I'm addicted to pray for people, uh, which means I have a heart for it. You know, I don't have to pretend it, I just have it. Amen? Sometimes I'm overwhelmed, you know, just that's why I'm overwhelmed, you know, and having a week off from Skype, you know, just everything. But I am addicted. And I was not until Jesus Christ called me. He addicted me to it. Amen? You cannot fulfill any call without being Addicted means being wholeheartedly for it. Amen? We should be addicted to Jesus. Amen? To doing His will. To Him. But we are addicted to so many things. So this is only one word, addicted. Everything else, it's negative. More usually, it is in a bad sense to devote, you know, by habitually practicing that which is ill. You know? physically and mentally dependent on particular substance, unable to stop taking it, you know. Uh, by, you know, she became addicted to alcohol and diet pills, for example, you know. So <laughs> you have all kinds of, you know, just addiction. Addicted means dependent, you know. Um, you know, uh, <clears throat> people can be addicted to all kinds of things. It means devoted to, obsessed with, fixated, you know. Um, means the quality or state of being addicted means compulsive need for and use of habit-forming substance, as heroin, nicotine, alcohol, or other things. You know, uh, you know uh, people say, well, it's easy to quit uh, smoking cigarettes. Well, the Surgeon General of the United States, I remember that was a long time ago, said that this is uh, addiction to, coke, to nicotine is as strong as to heroin. You know, I know because I used to, you know, just smoke cigarettes. I was a technician back in Poland in a, in a tobacco factory. I had every cigarette on my desk, yeah? Praise the Lord. And I remember, you know, just the Lord delivered me from alcohol. I don't know when. But when it came to cigarettes, I would be, you know, just thrown to the toilet, 20 minutes later running and buying again another pack and another, another pack. Finally, it dawned on me, God is not going to deliver me the way I wanted. 
And the way I wanted was quick, just like that. Because my sister in Alliance Church said, one day she, you know, one, uh, you know, one day morning she just walking toward the, her bridge, reaching on the top of the bridge to get, uh, you know, smoke, and she heard audible voice of God. My child, you don't need it anymore. Just like that, all was gone. Now that's a great deliverance, yeah? You don't have to pick up demons because behind every addiction are demons. I don't care if the Lord says that you flee, you, the demons are coming out. Amen? Those ignorant who don't know about deliverance, was, oh, there was no, because that's the way God decided. Amen? Her friend, you know, just a cook in Tarasen, you know, just woke up in the morning, you know how with the, you know, just smokers, as you know, you, you already awaken, but your eyes not not open yet. You're already reaching for a cigarette on the right, you know, whatever, you know, whatever side of bed you are sleeping here. Yeah. And God delivered him just like that, but not me. So Joseph, suffer. Ah, oh, suffer, I will deliver you. By suffering, you will know how big slave you are. So for three days, the first three days were the worst, but then later on, hey, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. He's with you through the whole thing, amen? I remember, to my, you know, I met this sister and the Lord told her, on the second day at 10 p.m., I will take away the craving from you. So the second day came at 10 p.m., she's just having all these cravings, and the Lord delivered her just like that. My pastor, in deliverance, yeah, who was ordained by Pastor Wall in Chicago, said to God, God wanted him to go to a Bible school, and he said, well, God, I love smoking and drinking. So, you better do something about it. It was just like that. Amen? He stopped having craving for, you know, just for alcohol. However, <laughs> 10 years later, <laughs> I watched as he didn't drink alcohol for 10 years, but yet he behaved, he behaved like a, a dry alcoholic. It means he, he would react like an alcoholic <laughs> once he threw the Bible across the room and we all froze. And, this is our pastor. <laughs> anyway, I went with him to Chicago, flew to Chicago, and Pastor Wally preached on a, a topic of alcoholic syndrome, which was based on a testimony of Monty Mulkey from Montana, who for 10 years did not drink, yet he behaved like an alcoholic, handled money like an alcoholic, dropped like an alcoholic, reacted like an alcoholic. He still had alcoholic or uh, drug addict perso personality, you understand? Being sober for 10 years. So finally, when he dropped his face through the French window, you know, having a fight with his wife, needing many stitches, he decided to pray <laughs> to God. So him and his wife prayed to God. God spoke to his wife. They went on the fast. God spoke to his wife, said, alcoholic pattern. You need deliverance from alcohol. Why well, didn't drink for 10 years? It's like God's lid on a boiling pot. You know what I'm saying? So in his case, the, the, that's not in all cases, you know? So I watched how Moti Molki was praying for my pastor from a distance from here to, to the first row. And, you know, the moment he started to pray, commanded the demons of alcohol out, his face went red and... He was getting ahead that all this, you know, nice vomiting story as all the spirits of alcohol were coming out. Praise the Lord, amen, for his mercy. Hallelujah. I had all kinds of people, you know, just um, <laughs> delivered from porn or delivered from homosexuality, which is an addiction too, you know, of a different type. So praise the Lord. Let us go to our first point, you know, <clears throat> that go quickly to some points, you know, you hear it from those people, or maybe it's you struggling with one thing or two or three or more. Help me, I cannot quit. That's exactly everybody who is, you know, uh, you know, just addicted, yeah? Before I go further, I just want you to uh, know one thing. Uh, it is, you know, uh, my deepest conviction that the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, it's enough to set us free from all addictions. Amen? And God uses deliverance to do that too. Amen? Praise the Lord. So, you know, Jesus is the only one who can meet our deepest needs, you know, and gives us the identity, acceptance, security, you know, and everything, you know, just uh, we need. Uh, coming back today, you know, just to the 
addicts of all kinds. You know, they, they, people some are workaholics. You know, they're addicted to work. Help me, I cannot quit. Well, it's difficult to bring people to that place. Amen. Oh no, I don't have any problems. I had a guy because you know his wife was talking to me. His parents were talking to me because he's drinking, yeah? And we're sitting in that room. He's a big guy. He said, I don't have a problem with alcohol. I can drink the whole bottle of whiskey by myself and I will not get drunk. I said, brother, you're telling me you don't have a problem with alcohol? You're so addicted that even one bottle is not enough for you. Of course he was addicted. That was in that room, the middle room. Praise the Lord. But help me, I cannot quit. We had a guy came to our ministry a long time ago. You know, he was a cocaine addict, 20 years. He said, if God deliver, doesn't deliver me tonight, I'm going to shoot myself. Of course, he tempted God. God delivered him in 20 minutes, which another drug addict, you know, was helping me. And you know, he could not keep his deliverance. You know, for too long, only two months. Because I said to the brother, you know, the Lord delivered you today from cocaine and cigarettes. You know, you, you have to read the word, you have to pray, you have to come to church, and you have to obey, you know, to the best of your ability. These four things, which I, if people don't do that, I don't want to even bother with them because they're not going to keep deliverance. Well, I was still learning, but that was a long time ago. Otherwise, I wouldn't pray for him, but God was also teaching me. So, you know, um, we didn't see the brother. I said, brother, you need more deliverance. Don't go to places Andrew's fear to threat. He didn't listen. went to a place, some kind of a party. They passed him, you know, just a cigarette. He took one tap only. And all the demons of cocaine were back. Now, demons of cocaine don't come into people because of one pop of cigarette. But if you were delivered from 20 years of bondage to cocaine, you understand? And cigarettes, a cigarette as strong as cocaine, it will open the door, even one puff. One pub, one guy who used to be a drug addict, God told him, don't go there. He shook a hand with a drug dealer. And the Lord told him, 120 demons passed to you at that very moment. You shouldn't be there. Don't bother. You know, so we have to sometimes be careful not to be, how to say, rescuers, yeah? Guided by misguided compassion. But we have to ask the Lord, am I to do that? Because otherwise you want to rescue the whole world. And God, you know, God wants you to be here, and you're going to be there. You have to learn to be led by the Spirit. Smith Wigger was, it's a known, you know, just a man of God, yeah? They call him father of the Pentecost. One day the Lord forced him to wait all day by the road. He used to evangelize witness to people. He said, no. He said, is it this person I am to minister to? No, no, no. Even if he's coming, he's still waiting by the road. Finally, a carriage is pulled by the horses. The Lord said, this is it. So he stopped the carriage. You know, just he ministered to the guy. He accepted Jesus. He died next day. So we have to do it. If we cooperate with the Lord, we'll be always in the right place. Amen? You know, because, you know, you lead somebody to the Lord, and because demons are come out, you know, because you kill somebody, it doesn't mean that you are in the right place. You know that? Many people doesn't get through to them, yeah? Anointing will do that. The name of Jesus will do that. Then, then you find out you are in the wrong place. God will use it. Anyway, he always uses us in spite of our foolishness and whatever. Praise the Lord. Help me, I cannot quit. So, this is the story of Brother Art. All the demons were back. Help me, I cannot quit. I, I'm receiving a phone call from, you know, another province in the in, in United States, in Canada, from the university. A man he, doing his PhD, he says, he was a man from Africa, yeah? Western Africa. He says, I cannot do that anymore. You know, I, uh, I'm falling into porno and in, into a sin of homosexuality. You know, he said, I, I went on a Google and I put Deliverance Western Canada and Promised Land is popped out. Would you pray for me? I said, well, come to Edmonton. We prayed for him here. Amen? He was in a homosexual lifestyle because his mother wanted a girl. She bought the girl's clothes. <laughs> a boy was born, so she was dressing up in him in girl's clothes, you know, for a while only. 
But you know, that opened the door to a spirit of homosexuality, you know, just he was here on the floor. I had three brothers helping me. Powerful devils, you know, but they came out. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, addicted to sex. Men, you know, from Lesbridge, married men, you know, Christian. You know, nymphomaniac, driven to the prostitutes all the time. The demon confessed that they came into him when he was 10 years old. Can you imagine? Help me, I cannot quit. Isaiah 58, verse 6 says, Is not this the path that I have chosen, to lose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let oppressed go free, that you break every yoke? God wants us to break every yoke. Amen? Including the yokes of addiction. There's so many addicts in the church of Jesus Christ. No wonder it is a cappuccino church. If I had only the money which Christians spend in drug houses, in gambling, I call casinos. You know how I call casinos? Because I, on the fourth road, I go to this church and they build this casino there. I call it synagogues of Satan. If I had only the money Christians spend in casinos, I would be able to go on the missions. I, but I'm restricted. Our Christians spend money on everything. I'll be directing right now deliverance all over. Because John Hay told you, God wants deliverance everywhere. That's my hard desire to flood the world with deliverance ministry. That's my revenge, people. For the humiliating the church of Jesus Christ, for what he did to me, my family, and what he's still doing, just only to Christians and then, of course, to the people. But praise the Lord, we have to be disciplined people. We have to be fasting because this is the past to break, you know, to set people free and break, you know, every yoke. Because, you know, there are so many addicts in the church of Jesus Christ. No wonder the Bible says, uh, this is a people, what people? God's people, robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are in, hid in prison houses. They are full of prey and none deliver us. For a spoil and none restore. Well, I want you to know this, that every Wednesday, men's prayer meeting, we declare, Lord, your word says that your people are in prison halls and none to deliver, none to restore. So let it be noted in heaven that we say to deliver, that we say to restore every Wednesday. And Wednesday is the backbone of this ministry. Without Wednesday, there's no promised land ministries. There's the prayer. The power is when two, three gather together, when two, three pray. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Help me, I cannot quit. I received this phone call through, uh, you know, parents from New York moved to Alaska uh, about their daughter in, uh, I think, Arkansas. Uh, anyway, she was, no, she was from Georgia. Georgia, Alabama, <laughs> for God of states. And anyway, she said, I'm addicted to alcohol. Young one, 20-something. I said, what happened? When did it start? Well, I got married. I said, and? Well, my husband got these jobs out of town. He's all the time out of town. I feel so lonely, abandoned. So I started to drink a little bit, a little bit. I said, well, you have to forgive your husband too. You know, and, and this and this got to be balanced, especially when you get married. Do you know the Bible says when you get married, a man should be free from all duty to spend this year, this year, this very year with his wife to bond to his wife. Free. You leave your mother, father, you, you're free from a military duty, that's what the verse is talking about, to just bond to your wife. And here, he was right away gone, you know, and you know, I have to tell you, uh, be, you know, there was a beautiful deliverance over the phone. I didn't have the Skype yet, yeah? It was over the phone. We prayed only once. It was just on the other side, things coming out. And later on, she called me and said, Pastor, you know, Joseph, I mean, uh, I'm so happy. I'm so full, full of the Holy Spirit. I'm so full, you know, thirst for God. Praise the Lord. Amen? But, you know, it was Father who, you know, just called me who, because somebody was concerned. Praise the Lord. So first of all, you know, just people have to admit, yeah, you know, I cannot quit. You know, sometimes you have to tell them, yeah, because they don't want to admit. Different, you know, just, you know, types, you know, of addiction. Bible says, what is addiction? 
and they that might recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Their will is so bound up, manipulated. They go, you know, like lunatics, you know, just, you know, and do everything, whatever the addiction is. From smoking to drinking to porno to gambling to uh, sugar, whatever it might be, you know, just the addiction. There are guys who are addicted on coke. I remember this big guy, and you know, just you know, he was really big, but you know, he had a so big belly, bigger than mine, you know. But anyway, he had to drink like two liters of coke just like that. That that's addiction, people. You know that. You know, coke ha has so much sugar. I have a, a glass of coke, but it's only during the barbecues. Praise God. From time to time, you know, I can have it. But some people just continually, you know, just they are. Uh, you know, drinking, you know. Praise the Lord. Give you an example of addiction. And you can put under this, this is about alcohol, but you can put under this any other addiction. You see how it works. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has babbling? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? That's called the night after, uh, the demonic after the night before. <laughs> Anybody can relate to it beside myself? I used to be a bartender when I got saved, by the way. So, so you know, just the next day, uh, I better have another drink. <laughs> who has woe, who has sorrow, who has contentious, who has bubbling, who has wounds without cause? Wounds, talking about wounds, man. Once the police found me, you know, just because they were kicking me with labor boots, you know, brought me to the university hospital. <laughs> I ran away from there. You know, just and I woke up in the morning and not open my eyes, you know. Because my face was swollen up. I go slowly to the mirror. I've never seen a face like that in my life. It was black. Puffed up and black face. Yeah, because of my stupidity, I wanted to take somebody, you know, just whatever, a few guys. Yeah, because I used to train some, you know, arts, you know, so I thought I could beat up anybody. Anyway, who has wounds without cause, who has redness of eyes, they that tarry long at wine. Long. Everybody says long. They did till they go down under the table. They did go to see mixed wine. No? That night I was mixing wine, beer, and scotch <laughs> straight without rocks. Look not thou up on the wine when it's red, when it gives his color in the cup, when it moves itself aright. At last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. That's a that's a really um, a poisonous snake. Thy eye shall behold strange woman. You drunk and you see this woman, you think that she is the most gorgeous person ever you've seen. But you don't know that she's, you know, she doesn't have a leg. She's blind on her eye. She's just, everything is crooked about her. I'm just giving an example, yeah? But she looks gorgeous to you <laughs> because you just drunk like a skunk. Time, thy eyes shall be called strange human, thy heart shall utter perverse things. It's under influence of alcohol or drugs or whatever. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lies down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lies up on the top of a mast. They have stricken me, shall thou say, and I, I was not sick. It means you didn't feel it. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. Like me. When shall, when shall I wake? I will seek it yet again. That's addiction. All these bad things happened to the guy. He was beaten. All this shame and he woke up with the big hangovers. All the money got. I will, uh, you know, when shall I wake? I will seek it yet again. That's addiction. Amen? Hallelujah. So you can be addicted, you know, just to alcohol, street drugs, Pharma drugs, you know. My mother was addicted to aspirin, <laughs> you know. And uh, I had a brother who was taking, what was he taking? I think Ativan. Later on, he could not quit. The moment he would try to quit, he was on the smallest dose they can, the pharmacy can do even to like, to cut it, yeah? Yet the moment he would try to quit it, he would vomit. Yeah, he would just be getting so sick. So finally, there was a special guy in Edmonton that they would give them a liquid form, so small, and he still did not help. Till this um, 
I know this brother. This, till this guy from Jamaica had a word of knowledge. He said, spirit of addiction, come out of him. <laughs> came out with a big scream. That's it. That's what it was. You can be addicted, of course, to cigarettes. You know, um, addicted going to doctors. Yes, yes. I, would, I was delivering some sister like that, addicted to doctors, addicted to medications. You know, not that she needed. She had to, the more medication, the better. Addicted to cigarettes, gambling, games, internet, sugar, foods. Why people do it? Sins of the poor fathers, you can get it from your mommy, you can get it from your daddy, amen? You know, God visits the iniquity, sins of the poor fathers to the third and fourth generation. Alcoholic syndrome runs in the, you know, it was in my family line, you know, my uh, great grandfather was a very wealthy man, but then he, he drank everything, you know, and casinos and women, you know, so my grandfather, you know, got nothing, you know, but the title, you know, and then you know, then he was a drunkard, died. Now, my great-grandfather died when he was 90 years old. <laughs> my grandfather died when he was 75, and the only reason he died because he, he fell asleep drunk on a, on a bench in a, in, a, in a park and got um, pneumonia, <laughs> you know. And then I was born, my sister and my brother, you know. Well, my brother died because of alcohol. My sister married an alcohol. And when I got saved, I was a bartender alcoholic syndrome, you know, in our lives. So why people do it? Sins of the poor fathers. Sin of the teenagers who try. Well, let me try, yeah? Everybody remembers the first try? And you were on it for, the, for a long time? Yeah. The thing I couldn't do is the cigars, you know, we got so sick. <laughs> huh. Why people do it? False comfort. Sin attracts. Wow, well, look cool, yeah? <laughs> what do you think? Like Bogart or whatever, you know? <laughs> okay, and uh, you know, why people do it? Devil at work. Why they cannot quit? Mind control at work. Devils at work. Chemistry is changed. Do you know that porno? This is, I have uh, this, um, you know, just article. These are not Christians. Scientists discovered that people who are too much into porno, as it goes, you know, masturbation, the chemistry is changed here in the brain. You need rewiring, literally, by laying hands on. That's what happens. But with every addiction, you know, there's, there is, you know, you know, chemistry is changed. Your, your uh, system is depending on this thing and it wants to have the first experience, the, the experience. You're looking for this experience, which brings the vomits later on, you know, but you're looking for that experience of bliss, which brings the vomits later on, by the way. Why they cannot quit mindsets? Why they cannot quit love of sin? The first step to addiction is habit, and this is how it happens. You feel pain, so you reach for the pills. You feel down, so you do something to pick up yourself. You feel stressed out, so you do something to calm yourself down. It worked before, so it will work again. You have trained yourself to depend upon chemicals to pick yourself up, to stop the pain, to soothe the nerves, to feel good. And worse before, later on. You really can have a good time. You cannot really have a good time of feeling good without it. Occasionally, things become a habit, a crutch you lean on. When the effects wear off, the guilt, the shame, the fear, the shame, and the torment. Each successive move is like a vortex taking you down more and more and more. Deeper and deeper on the road to destruction. When addicts are on high, they feel like a king on the throne. They are filled with grandiose ideas and often become aggressive in their behaviors. It is progress, progressive down to stronger and bigger drugs or whatever the whole thing might be. Now, dealing with addiction, you know, what you have to deal is denial syndrome. I don't have any problem. But look, you can you drink the bottle by yourself. No, but I'm not drunk. Well, that shows, you know, just how addicted you are. I remember, you know, when I got to, you know, just alcohol away from me, 
I don't even know when. And I, went, and I, I had a business, yeah, renovations. And so I went on a job site, and my coworker is just, I saw he had a case of beer. I said, what is that doing on a job site? So what is helping me? It's helping you. But anyway, I had a glass of beer. Do you know I was dizzy? My system was so purified already, you know, that it just made me dizzy. Praise the Lord. Does somebody feel uncomfortable? No? Okay. Maybe only those watching through the <laughs> internet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I don't have a problem, most addicts will say. Their actions scream like those of a misbehaving little children. Does anybody care enough about me to stop me from destroying myself? They say, I don't have any problem. Yet, inside, they crying. I need help. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, they're ashamed to admit, you know, that they, um, they need help. So, you have to use a tough love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Praise the Lord. So, you have to, you know, speak you know, the love. But it has to be, of course, has to be with, you know, uh, the truth has to be with love, as we said, but speaking the truth in love. Praise the Lord. <coughs> um. Hallelujah. For the addict, the fear of being exposed is far worse than actual consequences of being exposed. So assure the person you love them. Amen? I will, tell you, I will give you um, something from John Hopkins University, test questions. You can put uh, under it, you know, just anything else. You know, it will be about alcohol, but you can put drugs, you can put this, this, that, that, gambling, whatever you want. But these are the questions, you know, and concerning your life, and you will see it, how it works. Do you lose time from work due to drinking? Could be drugs, could be gambling, could be this, could be whatever. Is drinking making, making your home life unhappy? Do you drink because you are shy with other people? Is drinking affecting your reputation? Have you ever felt remorse after drinking? Have you gotten into financial difficulties because of drinking? Do you turn to lower companions and inferior environment when drinking? Does drinking make you careless of your family welfare? Has your ambition decreased since drinking? Do you crave a drink at definitely a definite time daily? Do you want a drink next morning? Does drinking cause you to have difficulties in sleeping? Has your efficiency decreased since drinking? Is drinking jeopardizing your job or business? Do you drink to escape from worries or troubles? Do you drink alone? Have you ever had a complete loss of memory as a result of drinking? Has your physician ever treated you for drinking? Do you drink to build up your self-confidence? Have you ever been to hospital or institution on account of drinking? Now, listen to this. If you answer yes to any one of the questions, just only one, it is a definite warning that you may be an alcoholic. Just one out of 20. If you have answered yes to any two, you probably are an alcoholic. If you have answered to three or more, you're definitely an alcoholic or drug addict or addicted to this, that, that, that. Praise the Lord for the truth. So, the next point, freedom of admitting and repenting. <laughs> so, Sin is at the root. We, you have to recognize it is a sin. You know, um, they have to see it. Uh, I forgot where I put the scriptures, you know. Um, hmm, where do I put the scriptures? I had the scriptures here. Uh, Who shall ever confess his sins shall obtain mercy. You know, that that's in Proverbs somewhere, yeah? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So sin is at the root. They have to see it. Secular psychology, therapies, programs will not admit that. I had a guy who was native from a Mohawk tribe, Ontario, a big guy, young, tall guy. He went to major rehab centers in Canada. Nothing delivered him. He met one of my boys on a bus who was reading a book on deliverance. He got so interested, came to us. This guy was, uh, the first three welfare checks, he was gone for three days because he was a lone drinker, you know. Then he lived with me for five months, you know, and um, oh my, he got uh, deliverance from alcohol. Sometimes he was, this liquid would be coming out of his mouth, 
we would have a bucket, it's impossible to have so much liquid in a stomach. Where this thing was coming from? I had all kinds of experiences, you know, with him. You know, he was taller, bigger guy. Once, you know, I'm going down the stairs, and I hear behind me, <sighs> I, I turn, you know, around, and then here he is with me with hands like this. I say, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Another time, I'm, I'm praying deliverance, and he grabbed my hand, and having his mouth open, he's going to bite it. I said, the blood, and yeah, <laughs> praise God. But anyway, you know, he got so much deliverance, he went to the Google program for native people, you know, to be a bank teller and got a job in major branch of Royal Bank on, on Jasper Avenue. Praise the Lord. But he's also a sad story, because after being delivered for a long time, he decided to have just one beer, yeah? First of all, he, when I warned him not to move in with this guy because he is not born again, he used to be a drug addict, I mean, no, not drug, a, a, a drug pusher. I said, why are you moving with the guy? The Bible says, what light has to do with darkness? Believer with unbeliever, you know? And uh, Christ was belly. I wrote it to him on a piece of paper. I found my paper ripped into little pieces. He took time to rip it apart so small. Now that's rebellion, yeah? I mean, I was like a father to him. But anyway, he, later on, you know, a brother broke and witness, he met him at the university, he said, I have to come to Joseph. He started with one beer. Ah, it's nothing. Then it was two. Then it was three. And then soon he was back. If it was only one beer, but, you know, he went back to his, you know, um, sin. But they have to admit that this is a sin. Understand? That's why psychology is a gospel without a cross. You understand? Oh, you have a problem. No, you have a sin. <laughs> That's why you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> That's what it is. I remember I went to this meeting, you know, and there were people to be delivered, one guy to be delivered from cigarettes, so they were eager to pray deliverance and cast out devils. I said, hold on! This person needs to repent first. Because whoever destroyed the temple of God, God will destroy the moment I said, so he repented, and there was a guy, a kind of a prairie evangelist, and he prophesied instead, he said, that says the Lord, I'm glad my son that you ask for forgiveness. So God confirmed what I said. <coughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. <coughs> so, they have to admit that, amen? And, oh, I have this, so sorry, I forgot. Here it is. They have to admit that he that covers his sins shall not prosper. If they don't admit, they will not get deliverance. Uh, slave who likes his chains cannot be set free. You can bring a horse to water, but you cannot make him what? Forcing his head to drink, yeah? You cannot do that. But he that, covers, he that covers his sins shall not prosper. But whoso confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Amen? So, praise the Lord. They need to repent, you know? If we confess our sins, His face will just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise the Lord. Okay, now. <clears throat> the need for deliverance. How they get deliverance. So, how to deliver drug addicts? Yeah. Well, number one, they have to admit. Amen? Number two, they have to repent. Number three, they have to see that they have the power. You know? Because God, there's no temptation which came upon a man. The God, which is common to man, that God does not give a way out. You know? And Romans 6, 12, you know, when the urge comes, whatever, for whatever, um, actually, it is, uh, well, it says, uh, this is a good verse too. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies that you should obey it in the last thereof. So it's a sin, you know, you're giving in to sin. But in uh, Romans 6, 11, likewise reckon, which means uh, consider yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, because you are already dead. Your old man with all this craving is dead. How? I don't know. But it's a spiritual truth and reality. You're dead. If you say you agree, I agree that I am dead to this craving just knocking on my door. 
have a drink, go to casino, have a path, or whatever, go and watch something. You say, I reckon, declare myself dead unto this. And you, and that's the truth which is. In the moment you agree with the truth, and the power of God is flowing right now, that moment to you. And the, the, the temptation will lose its power. Amen? Then, of course, get deliverance. Amen? No repentance, no deliverance. If you don't admit, you cannot repent. Amen? Then you have to, you know, then you have to deal with the mindsets. You know? And then you have to deal with the body, obviously. Then you need support and follow up. You know, I remember when my pastor uh, quit smoking, he used to, he told us he used to reach out all the time to the pocket, like I have this pocket here on his on the left hand, yeah? You know, because he used to have cigarettes all the time here, yeah? So he just put a little Bible there, yeah? He broke the habit of reaching for cigarettes which were not there, yeah? They used to be there, but then he quit. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so how do people recover from this cycle of addiction? Number one, first of all, we need to understand that these people do not have a drug or alcohol problem only. They have a life problem. You understand? They don't know what to come back to. You know, if you take the drugs, you know, they have a void. So they have a life problem, number one. Not addiction problem. Whatever the addiction is, they have a life problem. And Jesus is life. They need Jesus. Amen? Second, they do not have just personal problems. They have family and community problems. Third, their problems are not just rooted in physical disease. Their problem is physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And the spiritual is overlooked in most of those treatments. We have to help people understand their freedom in Christ and show them how Christ can meet every need. Amen? Programs do not save people. Teen challenge. A lot bless. There's some success. But most of them go back to sin. They take them away into a farm or whatever. And they don't. They don't drink. They don't do anything. The problem is that almost 80% of them go back. They need deliverance on top of it. But you cannot tell them those who run those things. Progress do not save people. We, only Jesus. Amen? There is an absolute necessity for deliverance. Praise the Lord. Um, these people need also deliverance from the addict mindset. Now, if they're born again, they have mind of Christ, but they operate like the mind of an alcoholic, drug addict. Whatever, if you remove the, you know, the alcohol, they have a mind of an addict. Addiction feeds them. Addiction you know, just, you know, fills the void. Addiction gives them the illusion of little happiness, you know, escape, and so on. But the Bible says, be transformed by renewing of your mind. Amen? You have to understand. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies which you abuse various ways, as an addict, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So the, the body, yeah? Be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. You have to renew the mind. You have a mindset of an alcoholic. Alcoholic syndrome, and that's the way you are. You work like an alcoholic, you react like an alcoholic, you drive like an alcoholic, you drive. You handle finances like an alcoholic. Or an addict. Addict. Because they're like an addict. So you need, so Monty Mulkey in, in, from Montana, uh, uh, later on, you know, just uh, when he started to fight back, he, he was just commanding every cell of a brain which was dead because of alcohol to come back to life, you know. He's a pastor right now of, a, um, of a West Coast Church of Deliverance in Thousand Oaks, you know, just California. It goes like I do. Amen. He's been in Edmonton, you know, about three times I invited him. That was a long, long time ago. We are all students of Pastor Wally. Amen. So you have to renew your mind, you know, just and so uh, you break the mindset of al 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 alcohol by prayer, by reading the Word of God, but do, by reading the Word, by praying, by fellowshipping, you understand? 
you know, and by obeying, because that's the way you have to change your thinking. Because if you just, you know, just somewhere else, you know, you think like the, like people of the world. Yeah, that's the way they think. You will never be changed. You have to be in a, you know, in a Christ environment. Then the mind of Christ, which you have, starts to operate and replace, replace, replace. You know, the 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 the, the alcoholic syndrome or drug syndrome mind. Break the mindsets by prayer and practice, and recommended scripture brainwashing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then go to the ne next point. Replace the void. You have to replace the void. There's a void in them. You know. You know. The, you know demons are out. You know, and uh, I'm still, you know, my mind still thinks like an alcoholic or whoever. There's a void. What do I do? Well. Bible says, and be not drunk with wine to fill the void when it's an ex excess, but be filled with the Spirit. How, do, how are you filled with the Spirit? Well, you practice the things which Spirit means presence of God. Amen? When you read the Word of God, at the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. You filled with God. Amen? When you prayed, you filled with the presence of God. When you worship, with presence of God. When you go to church, presence of God. Prayer meeting, presence of God. Amen? So you practice presence of God. And you walk in the Spirit. And the Bible says, if you walk in the Spirit, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, or the cravings, yeah? You, you fill this void with things of the Spirit. David said, I heard thy word in my heart, that I may not sin against you. But if you don't have it, well, it's easy to sin. So practice presence of God. Other godly activities help. Exercise. Diet. If you are an alcoholic, avoid sugar. Demons. Do you know that demons don't need you know, just uh, alcohol if you decide to quit? What they need is just only sugar, 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 sugar. Lots of donuts, sugar, sugar, sugar. Because that is that is transferred into alcohol in your bloodstream. I'm not talking about having one donut, but some people just go into... Praise the Lord. The last point, praise God. After deliverance, learn to stand and follow up. Learn to stand. I don't have to teach people how to stand up. Everybody wants to drive through deliverance, drive through everything, and I don't lift up my finger. All the devils are out. My mind already, you know, changed overnight, you know, and I'm powerhouse. And if you didn't do it overnight for me, you don't have power. No, brother, you're, you're a lazy butt. That's what you are. I'm not going to do everything for you. If I deliver a person and didn't teach them how to fight back, it's only half of the success. But if I deliver a person halfway and teach them how to stand and fight back, I have the full success. And believe me, that's what I learned to do on a Skype. To a point, I said, no, I'm doing. I'm not doing it anymore. You, you stand up. You fight back, sister or brother. And you know what? I'm having a great success. I'm not, you know, just uh, delivering people, having a bunch of, you know, just dependent on Pastor Joseph in case they go and fall away or trip over, yeah? They know how to stand up and fight back. Praise the Lord. One brother said, oh, please pray for me. I said, I stopped praying for you, brother. Now it's self-deliverance or your wife. She said, why well, don't you even speak in tongues? I said, well, okay, let's pray. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit on the Skype. When she broke into tongues, she couldn't stop it. And then she started to get up early at 3 o'clock in the morning. Nobody told her just to pray because she after, you know, she was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then, this brother is never calling me again. He was really bad. He was ready to end up in a mental hospital. You know, he was hypochondriac, hypochondriac. He thought he had every sickness. <laughs> you know, if he shook hands with you, he thought already that he had every disease, you know, passing to him. You know, that, that, that's a paranoia of a degree, like, unbelievable. But people need to stand up. Amen? Finally, my brethren... All those ex-alcoholics. The problem with the AA, you know, 
you know, just people is they always stand up. I am an alcoholic. No, you were. Who such a, whom such said spirit spirit indeed, amen? And as you are reinforcing things, you might not be drinking, but you are still an alcoholic. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That's your responsibility. You be, you do, you read the word, you pray, you come to the meeting, you obey. Put on the armor, whole armor of God, you, that you might be able to stand against the vibes of the devil, including the cravings. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places which want to destroy you. Wherefore, take unto you, you do it, the whole armor of God, that you might be able to withstand you in the evil day, and having done all, stand. Everybody said, stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. Thy word is truth, read the word. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel. If you be busy for the Lord, you won't be busy for other things. Amen? Above all, taking the shield of faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You know, you'll be sending arrows to the devil instead of him sending to you. People say, well, how are you doing, Joseph? I said, what else? I'm in the trenches. The devil is shooting, and I'm shooting. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And take the helmet of salvation, that's your head, and sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If you read the Bible, yeah? Praying always. Everybody says always. This is the continuous walk. Oh, this Christian life, I have to pray always. Well, well let somebody else pray for you always. Yeah? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You pray for yourself and pray for your church for all the saints Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm finishing. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Oh, I'm just going to have one. Oh, nothing happened. Oh, I'm going to have another one. Oh, nothing happened. Back to the moment. Praise the Lord. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen? You don't have to stand up and keep saying that you're an alcoholic. You're delivered. Praise the Lord. You're free. Amen? Praise God. But it's a road to freedom, you know, even from addiction. But you don't have to start somewhere, you know. Um, gave you the steps, you know, just which you, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> The nile syndrome, you have to just simply deal with it. Then you have to, you know, admit, repent, you know, start to get deliverance, start to change your mind, start to take care of your body, you know, exercise and do things which I write. Take care of the whole man, spirit, soul, and body. Amen? Praise God. And you have to, you know, learn how to resist. Submit to God when temptation comes. I will say, resist the devil. That's the whole school of deliverance we have. And that he will flee from you. Amen? Oh, God guarantees that. Praise the Lord. Okay, let us stand up and uh, we'll sing a song. Oh, everybody says, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your word, which sets us free. For the truth, Lord, Set me free in the areas where I might be addicted to wrong things. I confess it as a sin. Renounce it. Forgive my parents and ancestors. I close all the doors. Break every curse. Lose myself, my mind, my whole body, whole being. From the power of addiction, mindsets of addiction, Jesus, help me to fill the void by doing what's right, reading the word, praying, fellowshipping, obeying, practicing the presence of God. 
Amen. Praise the Lord.